the back. Awesome. Good, good stuff. Um, so uh, I do want to thank Chad and the entire team for organizing uh, today. Um, what an outstanding event it should be and uh, personally quite humbled to be uh, in the lineup of speakers that are going to be here today. So uh, thanks again, Chad. Um, so today, uh, Chad had asked me to talk about my leadership journey uh, and my approach to leadership. And, you know, I, I always like to s sort of start off with a Dilbert cartoon. I'm, sh I'm assuming folks have seen Dilbert. Uh, Dilbert is the, uh, the person in the red shirt, and I think the other person is the pointy-haired boss, I think is what uh, he is referred to. And I love Dilbert because uh, it's satire, right? And, and they poke fun at business. They poke fun at all the jargon uh, that, that most of us spew out as, as, biz as business grads. So my goal today um, is to get through this, and by the end, you, shouldn't, you, you won't think that I should be another character in a Dilbert cartoon. So with my leadership journey, I'm just, uh, you know, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, my background, which includes my family, which is such an important part uh, of my life, and then get into um, some of the things that I subscribe to uh, in, terms of, in terms of leadership. And hopefully you can get one or two nuggets out of there. Uh, and if you don't, it's only been 18 minutes or so, so no, no worries. This is, if you, if you come and visit me in my office uh, in Kingston, you'll see this picture hanging uh, prominently in, in my office. And uh, it's a picture of, of uh, three people. One of them is me. Um, it's a long time ago. It's about 36 years ago. And uh, I'm with my, uh, my teammates, uh, uh, Bill and, and, and Jim. And the reason I have this up here is not because um, I like to look at myself with hair. <laughs> actually. Um, but it's a reminder uh, uh, for me because you know what? I'm a proud college grad. And this picture here represents my time at a small college. It's, it's a medium-sized college now, but Georgian College in a small community, Barrie, which is not unlike Brockville, actually. At least it was 36, 36 years ago. But it's a big reminder to me about how important education is uh, and where I got my start because I owe everything, and I mean everything in my career, to my start uh, at, co at college. So, you know, they talk about lifelong learning and, and sometimes folks look at that and think, oh, that's just a buzzword, but you know what? It really, it really is. And, and, and uh, my, time at, uh, my time at Georgian really got me uh, in, in love with education and in love with lifelong learning. So I've gone on to do other things. Um, uh, in my late 20s, uh, I had an aptitude for business and for numbers, and so um, I wanted to be an accountant. Um, and uh, despite all the jokes that I used to get about that, um, I thought it'd be a great trade to, 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 to learn. So uh, in my late 20s, I, uh, I would travel from Barrie to Toronto uh, two or three times a week, and uh, eventually, after five or six years, I uh, got my account, uh, accounting degree. It doesn't stop there, right? You have to keep on learning. So about, uh, I don't know, about 10 years or so ago when I realized uh, that I wanted to progress in my career, um, I went back to school and got my master's in public policy and management. Um, and that was in my mid-40s. And then just recently, last year, um, graduated from, uh, from Rotman School of Business and got my director's degree, again, in my mid-50-ish. Mid I like the word ish. It's my favorite word these days. Um, but so in your mid-50s. So the point is, you're going to constantly, constantly uh, be learning and, 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 and educating yourself. I talked a little bit about family. Family is so important. And whether it's family or friends or trusted colleagues, um, you know, in my role, it really is a 24 by 7 uh, position. And if it wasn't for the love and support of my family, I wouldn't be able to do what I do. And I'm sure uh, you know, many of you, whether it's family or friends, there are those folks that you know, they ground you, they, they help you, uh, and, they, and they support you. And you know, this, this collage was really taken just over the, uh, the last holiday break, of which I spent 10 days uh, in track pants, which was awesome, actually. Um, but you know, and, and, and so there's a picture of my wife, uh, who, who was a huge support, uh, my two kids, uh, Mitch, uh, who's now a, a technology uh, guru, uh, his girlfriend, Anna, who is his future, um, hopefully my future daughter-in-law. Unfortunately, he hasn't um, asked her anything yet, so um, 
most of our family is hoping he does because he's a much nicer kid with her than without her. Um, <laughs> sorry, Mitch. Uh, and then uh, my younger son, Josh, and I'm very privileged. I get to see Josh uh, at school every once in a while when he's not ducking around not to see me in the hallways because he's a student at, uh, at the Kingston campus. If you follow me on Twitter, my cat and my dog uh, are, are, are featured prominently on the, on the weekends, and, and the rest are you know, my mom and, and my in-laws. But the point is, family is a huge, huge part of my life, and you need those folks uh, in your life to, 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 uh, to, to, to help you, uh, help support you. So let me, I'm just gonna spend, I've got about five or six things that I wanna share in terms of my approach uh, to leadership. And the first one is commitment and passion. You know, you have to love, love what you do, okay? Um, it may not be your first job, it may not be your second job, but eventually find something that you love to do. You know, I, you know who here on, on Sunday night gets, you know, a little antsy because you gotta go to work Monday or go to school, right? I love Sunday nights, love it, because that means Monday, start of a new day. Uh, start of a new week and quite often I'll tweet something out about so excited for the week because I truly am I truly am you gotta love what you do you know um, you see a picture of me in, 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 in the slide uh, one of I'm, I'm actually um, laying bricks and stuff so this was a this was a program that I started here called hashtag go to class I didn't take this job to sit in my office. I took this job so that I could get involved and be with students and be with faculty and see what you know, the neat things that we do in this, in this place. So I made a commitment to attend class. And I'm proud to say after six years, I've attended about 120 classes. And I've done everything from bricklaying to firefighting to, uh, to ice, ice water, not fishing, what do you call it, ice water? Firemen don't fish, I guess they do fish. Um, but but uh, quite a bit, actually. Um, but but the, the point of the matter is, um, I get a chance to, to be with students. I get a chance to see all the cool things our faculty do, and because our faculty do amazing things in the classroom. Communications and integrity. You know, if for those of you uh, in leadership positions, or want to be in leadership positions, or, or aspire to, um, you have to be visible, okay? Communicate. Be visible, be transparent. You know, I, I walk the halls a lot. And, and, you know, my wife says, I can't believe you get paid to do what you do and just walk halls all day long. But the reality is, you find out more about talking to people in the halls, if you're listening, and, and, and talking to folks in the hallways, getting a chance to meet different people. Um, and that's what you need to do as a leader. You need to be out there and you need to be committed to something. Um, and, and leadership in good times, you know, it's easy, it's, you know, and, and at this college, we've had lots of great things uh, taking place. And, 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 and you know, when, when things are going well, it's easy to communicate. But sometimes things don't go so well. You know, and I'll, I'll use an example. In 2017, we had a strike. It was terrible for students. It was terrible for faculty. And it was terrible for, 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 for all the folks that worked here in our community. But I made a decision at that time to communicate with folks each and every day. And it wasn't an easy thing to do. And every day I would send out a note to folks and say, this is what I know today. And every day I'd get about 50 or 60 emails back. Um, some of those things weren't very nice. Um, but you know what? The point of the matter was you communicate and you were visible. And the reality was, what I didn't know was, all across the system, and I've been told this many times, folks were actually coming on our website to see what we were saying about what was going on, because we were the only ones that were communicating on a daily basis. So the point is, you know, be visible, good times and in bad times. In a leadership position, you have to have, and here's a Dilbert uh, jargon strategy, the, the, the reality is, have a plan and stick to it and do something, okay? Stand for something. You know, as a, as a, as a college, uh, five years ago, we developed a strategic plan. Um, and you know what? In my 36 years of, of, of business and of my career, I have never, ever seen an organization so focused on doing something. Um, I, I'm so proud of the folks that work here. 
uh, in terms of completing what we set out to do. You know, five, six years ago, we said we were going to be globally recognized. And, you know, our, our, uh, our, our, student, our student demographic, our student population, we had 80 students, 85 students uh, from, from, uh, from around the world. That was it. Today, we have over 1,500. And we're a better place and a better college and a better community because of that. Teamwork. You know, Kathy's laughing because she's new to the team and I found her picture on her old uh, company website. Sorry about that. Um, you know, as a leader, you're only as strong as the team. Everybody knows that. And you have to have folks around you that you trust, you respect, and will tell you when, you know, when you're not doing things right and when you're being, when you're being an idiot and, or, or when you're just, you know, you need to hear that hard stuff in a respectful way. But you need those folks and you need to surround yourself with those, types of, uh, with those types of people. And I've been very blessed and fortunate that we've always had uh, good folks, uh, whether it be the close team that I work with or the expanded team at the college. And we recently um, were going through a demographic shift and, and a lot of my senior team is retiring and we're replacing them uh, with new folks. And you know, there's lots of smart people out there, but to find smart people that share your core values and will be part of the team isn't as easy. I'm very proud to say uh, that we've found uh, two others that, that share those, those values. Positive attitude. Um, I'm a big believer in, a po in, being, in being positive. Always, always glass half full. Um, and I'm, when I mean positive, I don't mean having your head in the sand and not being aware of things that are going on, but looking things through a positive lens. You know, if you look at things through a positive lens, you can see opportunity, right? If you don't, you won't see those opportunities. And it's so important to have that, to have that attitude. Um, you know, if, if, you, if you go through life looking at everything from a negative perspective, then it will be negative, right? Look at things through a positive lens and you'll see the beauty in everything. I put this up twice because I really believe in it. Um, no, it's not an error. I didn't put the second slide up wrong. I really do believe in this. And today, you know, especially in social media, there is so much negativity out there, so much. And this is a quote that I love because it was, it was, it was, um, it was said by a gentleman uh, that's an education uh, guru that we had at a conference a couple of years ago at St. Lawrence. And he said, we need to make the positive so loud that the negative becomes almost impossible to hear. And that's such a great message, you know what? Because all you see and read about is the negative stuff. And we, in, in this room, and this is a positive group because that's why you're here today, right? Everybody in this room believes in that. We need to shout it out and we need to stand up and talk about the good things that are happening in this world and what's happening in our life and what's happening at this college or in the community that you're in because the negative is there. So let's drown out that negative um, by making the positive so loud. Finally, you know, um, I had a colleague of mine, a friend of mine, a former boss as, as well, that once said to me, Glenn, he said, take what you do very seriously, okay? Take your job, take your role very seriously, but don't take yourself too seriously. You know, you got to have fun, you got to laugh. Um, you know, I, I like to do videos. I, I can't act. You know, if I were in the music theater program here, I wouldn't, Janet, I wouldn't last a semester. Because not only can I, get, I can't act, I can't sing, and I can't dance, so I'm no triple threat, I'll tell you that. Um, but I, I, I like to communicate like that, and I like, you know, I like to poke fun of myself. I don't, I don't care. It, it, it's, you know, you got to laugh, and you got you to have fun. And uh, whether it's cheering for the Leafs, which has not been a lot of fun for the last 50 years, um, I heard a boo back there. Um, but uh, just, you know, when you get when you, in, in life, learn to laugh and, 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 and have some fun. So in the end, if I leave you with anything, you know, love what you do, be very passionate about it, surround yourself with good people, be positive, have fun and laugh a lot, and be nice, and be nice to everyone. Thank you.